Michigan Peace and Liberty Coalition is proud to present the 5th Annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. It will be held at the Circle Pine Center in Delton, Michigan, just outside of Kalamazoo, starting Thursday, June 22nd, and going through Monday, June 26th. That's right, Liberty Fest is getting longer and stronger. There will be presentations, discussions, baking duels, and outdoor activities in an environment that is both family and grown-up friendly. There will be special appearances by Jeffrey Tucker, Dana Martin, and a few of the Freedom Fiends. If you have only talked about what a free society would look like, this is your chance to live it and see it with your own eyes. Now round up your friends and family and get them registered today at mplfest.org. And there's a discount for paying with Bitcoin. That's mplfest.org. Dogs welcome. Longer leashes recommended. And I think it's great what's happening in the, by and large, anarchist community. There are a lot more people having friend-ending discussions, and that's going to happen. <laughs> it's great. Uh, There's friend-ending discussions happening everywhere. It's a wonderful time. That's going to happen. There are core principles that divide people that have to be exposed. We can't go singing Kumbaya falsely into the night thinking we all agree on something. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 113th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by BIPCOT No Government License. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can learn more about this at BIPCOT.org. So, we got cursed on our 113th episode. Andre, his internet was just... Yes. Wouldn't work. Yes, I. Yeah, we're back. I'm Jeremy. That's Dave. Andre is. Andre's not here, man. Uh, he's having some uh, internet issues this week, so we had to cut it him loose. Bad. But we do have. Uh, we are brought to you this week by Fiend Phone, and as always, room for freedom, which there is nothing there yet, but there will be. So check it out. Um, and this week we also. Uh, uh, Andre had to bow out late, but we did have somebody coming in anyway, so he'll just have to pick up the slack. We have our friend and multiple time returning guest, Shane Buell back. Shane, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm doing great. It's uh, good to be back as usual. Yeah, man. Well, you are one of my favorite guests. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, thanks. You're one of my favorite hosts. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> feel the love folks feel the love so yeah don't, we've don't, don't get flood my ego with anything else <laughs> we've uh we, we've had Sh we've had shane here a bunch of times he's filled in as a guest host he's we've had him as a guest and uh since the last time uh we had you on now you're even busier because now you've joined me now you're also a co-host on the freedom fiends so that's yes, exciting I am. man yeah, it's uh, it's hard to believe that it's actually happening. It's almost s surreal. It's like uh, it hasn't actually sank in yet that it's actually happening. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be in some Wikipedia article like a thousand years from now. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, you've made the big time, man. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, I believe me, man. I know that feeling. I was like that for the first couple of months, <laughs> and which is why I still, which is why I still love hanging around there, and you know. It's just the fact that I I'm could so say, hey, I'm on radio, I man. Was, I don't think I'd be able to not cuss. I, it's so hard for me not to do it even like now, like in real life. It's, well, it's just I don't hard. know. I guess it depends on how good the board op is because they do have a cuss dump. So he can supposedly catch that if, if you do <laughs> let it slip. Yeah. Well, they, they for the most part, I think they tend to slack well not that they slack off but they they pay less attention to us because well it's af it's after hours so after a certain hour it's you know you're a lot why hasn't there been a, a a popular vote on changing some fcc regulations as far as speech like what has happened there like what because why I, has it this anytime that's so ridiculous anytime that topic gets broached all the special interest groups like you know all those crazy mom and dad you know mom groups and stuff that think everything yeah. um is is ru is is uh, is killing the children mouths 
yeah, you know, it's like, oh my God, they can't hear that language. <laughs> um, you know, and as, as Michael Dean likes to say, listen, if your First kid day in public education, <laughs> if, if your kid is up listening to the freedom fiends at one o'clock in the morning, you have a hell of a lot more issues than the fact that your kid is listening, that your kid is listening to curse words. <laughs> what the hell is your kid doing up at one o'clock in the morning listening to our show? Right. At that point, the fiends is likely to be a good influence on them. Exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean. So, so was you nervous your first show, just knowing that you know you were live on on? I think you know. there was some of that. I'm not really sure how many, how big, how large the live audience actually is, but it is something that I was self conscious of the first time. But then uh, during our last show, Jeremy actually got drone strike during a break, and uh, he came back right just in time. But I was afraid that I was going to have to do a segment without him. Yeah. It's almost like I planned that. Um, oh, that was like Jeremy's first show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what we said because it was. That's, oh my god, that's that what, that was tell my very my very my very first Freedom Fiends episode was I wasn't even I wasn't even a co-host. I was just I was a guest host with Lou and he got he got droned in the middle of a long segment. Uh, like three minutes into the into the segment, and we had just started talking about this article. Uh, somebody was re- retelling the tales of uh, Stalin's Russia, and all of a sudden, Lou is just gone. And I'm like, "All right, so here we are. I'm on the radio for the first time ever, and uh, I'm all by myself. So <laughs> you just gotta keep talking because the uh, there's that, was, the the buzzer uh, that goes off. You gotta go back and listen, Shane. Go find yeah. it. It's so worth a listen. I. I couldn't breathe. I could breathe. I thought I thought Lou did it on purpose. I don't. I still think the jury's out well, on that. Uh, but I was actually listening God. live to that show. Oh, you were. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, it was, I, yeah. I was on that. the floor laughing. My, I was listening live too. My girlfriend thought I was. There was an issue. She didn't get the situation. I'm like, babe, this is Jeremy's first time on live radio. <laughs> and the guy who's on live radio a thousand times, you know, is hosting with him, just drops off and is gone. And it's been like twenty minutes. No, now. it wasn't. No, he was, right. he was he was gone for like five minutes. But it felt like uh, it, it felt feels like, like forever, forever because, <laughs> yeah, when you're there and like you're, you know, when you have that, like you're crying, Jeremy. You were starting to say, Shay, when you got that, you know, when you have that pressure there, knowing that it's a live audience, and then also when you've been trained to, you know, when they, when, when it's pounded into your head, yeah, you can't be silent. Cause after six seconds, alar- after six seconds of silence, alarms go off <laughs> and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, and then, uh, so you got to just on the board up. I mean, alarms are going off in your head too. Oh yeah. So you need to, uh, you need to talk, you need to think. So, but yeah, you've, you've been yeah. great. I mean, I, I know Michael's praised, praised you a bunch, but, uh, I've listened. I mean, I, I obviously, I listen to all fiend shows except my own. Cause I just don't have time to listen to my own anymore, but well, I do take that as a compliment coming from Michael. Um, there was one time when I was trying to live read an article and I lost my place. And so I kind of had to wing it until I found my spot again, but I don't think anyone mm-hmm. really noticed. No, half the time we don't pay attention to what the other person's saying. We just kind of talk. We, we kind of just talk at each other. <laughs> well, as Michael always yeah, says, be ready to catch. So, like, I try to have something in mind that I'm ready to respond with if you know if I need to say anything. Well, yeah, it's he, a, you gotta you gotta develop a flow. Yeah, yeah, it, and it takes it takes working with people. I mean, it, obviously, it you, took you, us forever. Well, yeah, but I mean, and like, we still, you know, lag gets us sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, like Shane and I did a show the other night. It was just the two of us, but like we have a rapport already because well, we're friends and we've actually done right. shows together before. You know, you, we've had you, we've had you on a bunch of times. So like we've we've done this type of interaction before. So, so it was all natural. Yeah. It was just and yeah, was, and plus when I when when I'm on, when I do two man shows, unless it's with Lou or Michael on a Sunday night, um, I tend to get very ranty anyway <laughs> i mean phil yeah. phil, phil uh, uh one of the other new fiends phil pollard has learned this uh up close and personal a couple of times because i've just taken over an entire hour by by, by having a conversation with myself and uh, just going but yeah but you've 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 done a you know from the I, like i said i, I listened to your, your first one and you uh like, i mean like michael said you you nailed the intro better than most most of the hosts do uh, and you were doing that from you were doing that from memory. You didn't even have the sheet in front well, of you. Well, that's probably because it is from memory. I've listened to the show so much that it's just kind oh of been my gosh, yeah. burned into <laughs> my brain. Oh, and then you start picking up uh, different hosts. Uh, 
intros basically yeah you know, i can actually I, do I, different I don't ones listen yeah. i wouldn't say i'm a religious listener to the fiends but i will say that i do listen to uh, the occasional fiends episode actually yeah. i don't like gonna, and i'm not just saying that if you're I'm, gonna I, I actually do if you're if you're gonna listen to just the occasional fiends episode then i highly recommend getting one of the fiends apps that has the 24 7 function on it and uh, just do it that way, man, because that I, I love I love doing that because you can listen and I've listened to shows where like you put you hit it and it'll play a show from like a couple of weeks ago. And then the very next show listen, is like, I heard uh, a little birdie told me that Michael Fiend put Fiend coin miners in that app and uh, it was Bipcoin. running my battery Bipcoin. dead Bipcoin. every time I was using Bitcoin, not Fiend. No, not it's Fiend a secret coin, coin he's working on. It's called Fiend <laughs> coin. <laughs> oh, he he already had a coin. It wasn't so secret. It uh, it's still out there. I think uh, I think it's actually going to be changing ownership sometime soon. And who knows? That may actually take off. That's that's the one cryptocurrency I really hope takes off because that's the one I'm holding a lot of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that one. Yeah, that would. Uh, the one with the distributed uh, decentralized DNS. Because I mean, think about this. We take currency from them, correct? And by them, I mean the powers that be, the people that want all this centralized. We take currency from them. Then we take all of this ISP away from them because that's what a DNS is. It can let all the people network together without having to pay even somebody. All they have to do is run it. So now you're taking this essentially a utility fee away. So uh, there's a lot changing that people are finally realizing. It's almost like this free energy they keep talking about. Well, you can pretty much have free internet and everything as long as you can power computers. Yeah. And more and more people figure that out. It's it's over. Oh yeah. Well, they, are... they had to shut off apps in China because people were building mesh intentional mesh networks with cheap cell phones, right? And they were outpacing the Chinese government so fast with these cheap mesh net cell phones running one app, right? Mm -hmm. That the government had to ban it from all of the app stores. They had to basically say Google. Uh, uh, Apple, if you don't take this off the App Store, we're going to kick you out of our country. Yeah. Back during the Egyptian Revolution, uh, the government tried to shut down the Internet, and it was only down for like a few days, I think, and people started bringing it back up again. And that was back before we had all these apps and technology and stuff. So I think well, they tried Egypt, to do it again. Dog. That's not even well, yeah. in China where they're building everything. Yeah. Like, well, you yeah. can't and, shut uh, down China. If China no. disseminated into civil wars like uh, the segregationist South or whatever, like it would, <laughs> there would be no way to stop it. Like the Chinese government couldn't fight it. That's why they keep such a tight control. Well, they exactly. Have, they have to. They, I mean, every 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 government around the world is always outnumbered by its citizens. And how many people are in China? Many nations so exist inside that two billion person population. Is what I'm saying. Do you get what I'm saying there? It's, like how many different nations actually exist inside that? Yeah, because it's not like everyone in China is like, "Yo, I love that other Chinese person." It, it, it's definitely not like that. Well, I don't think it's like that anywhere, Dave. <laughs> exactly, it's like here. It's where like people are like, "Oh, you're from the north? Screw you!" Oh, oh, you're from the south? You must be a hillbilly redneck. Like, same shit happens there. Yes, yes. All those Chinese hillbilly to rednecks running degree. around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'd be a really cool dynamic to see the difference between chi Chinese hillbillies and, and American hillbillies. <laughs> what do they uh, have I, hillbillies I in China? Those. I don't know. I mean, yeah, there, there, there's hills in China's. So if you ever find hills, uh, it, there's, it, there's going to be billies to live in. It's going to be billies. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> Where, the, Anyways, where there's hill, Bill, a Bill shall just follow. just got shot up by some crazy mofo. I'm reading more stuff coming out. This guy had two kids die while he was uh, being a foster parent. I think there's more to this story. Whoa. I think this guy's kind of... I think well, before, had, yeah, before uh, before you bury the lead too much, yes, this is. Uh, well, he did shoot. Uh, what was it? Uh, what was this? Scalise. Steve, Steve. Steve. Yeah, Steve Scalise. I think the guy's name is from Louisiana. I mean, he's an utter bag of shit. But well, uh, I, I don't. I don't I don't know the man personally, and I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know that he's Read an utter what bag of shit. He's voted on. I'm in sure my he book is. That he's, makes him a bag of shit. He's <laughs> he's a high ranking GOP politician. I think he's what fourth in line. I guess 
the the way it, you know the whole power ranking because he's the he's the whip or the Pretty whatever it is. Much, he's very high up. Let's say that. Yes. Anyway, so yes, he he In was their gang. He's pretty way up there. Yes. Yeah, so he 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 and w- one or two of his aides and a, and a lobbyist or two, I think, were or they almost Rand Paul were sh- were shot yesterday and a uh, some crazy guy apparently he seems to have very he seems to have a lot of mental issues uh, uh can't, you know well, was, he wanted to vote for bernie dude come on well okay i wasn't going to go there dave but just in just the more and more that comes out about him there de- definitely seems to be he seems to be ra- a rather disturbed individual and uh yeah he he opened fire at the congressional baseball practice which that's a whole nother issue that i i'm sorry i know it like supposedly they do it for charity but these guys in the middle of a Wednesday morning, or at the beginning of a Wednesday morning, we're out on a baseball field practicing, which I guess in, on one hand is good because it yeah, means they can't be writing laws or passing laws. Yeah, and fucking Yemen right now like twenty four seven, and they've got time to play baseball. It's really it's fun, you know. But yeah, so anyway, so that it's happened. For the charity, it's for the charity, Jeremy. Yes, it's for the charity. Uh, but so that happened, and uh, so now there's the whole, you know. Everybody, everybody's up in arms one way or the other. There's uh, people on the left who are cheering this action, of course, um, and um, without a hint of irony, uh, those on the right are crying and acting like the giant snowflakes they are and screaming how horrible it is that these people are saying these things, completely forgetting that they acted the same exact goddamn way when, Ga- when Gabby Giffords was shot a few years ago. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, imagine if the same shit would have happened to Obama. I don't want to you know, come on. Well, no, I'm just saying, All, of course, it, the sides of the this this status paradigm are going to uh, f- recoil whenever one of their politicians gets shot and they're going to lash out when one of the other guy. they're going to laugh and say, yeah, that's another one off the block. Let's get all the rest of them. Now, that's that's par for the course, man. They're violent. Well, Yes, they are violent, but it's it. I, I don't know. Again, it just seems to be it's it seems to be ratcheting up even more because. Uh, here's with, what I wish would happen to Steve Calise. You know, as as a libertarian, here's what I w- would happen. Wish would happen to him. I wish he would come to the realization that he, that his job is evil. He would walk in, put his resignation in, and walk the fuck home and get a job in the private industry. That's all I wish he would do. That's well, it. That's not. That's it's that. Not, it's that simple. That's not going to happen. But. That's the worst I wish on that man. Yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily wish ill all the time, but I mean, it does pose the question because I mean, I, I made a I made a, 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 a Facebook post about this yesterday because because of the reaction, not because of the fact that the that people were shot, you know, and 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 whatever, but the fact that the reaction, the the just the blind ignorance to how just a few years ago you th- these people were saying the same exact thing uh that they're now denouncing is just so I, I don't know like i said i think with the with the rise of trump and the rise of the alt right i guess maybe it's just more in the forefront now but it's i i have a hard it's time temporary ign- faith in the system man i have a yeah well i have a hard time ignoring how extremely sensitive the right as a whole is and how like i i've listened Dude, you know it's it's you kind of I forget agree. you kind of forget when uh it's been eight years of of obama and eight years of uh the conservatives and the neocons and everybody screaming about the you know the the libtards the snowflakes and all this you know and the, and the sjw's which you know we see you know i see too mm-hmm. and i and i I, I, I agree with them in large part about the attitude of the people on the other side, but it's almost like it was kind of put out of mind for a while how ridiculously sensitive these idiots are too because as soon as the shoe's on the other foot and they feel more empowered, it's like, oh my God, how dare you say these things about, about these people and it's, or, or how dare you do this or, or how dare you t- take uh, pleasure in, this, in these people's pain. It's like, you do the same thing, man, and do you, you don't even realize it. Fuck about the person yeah. who loses their house, who can't pay their property taxes, or social contract. Who they're warriors. robbing from? Social contract or, or are the, the people that they just get killed on their words in paper? Do they like? No one thinks about that, huh? It's just oh, it, because they're outright evil aggression just is masqueraded as accepted by society because of law and because of you know legalese uh 
when they get shot at, it's the evilest thing in the world. It's like, what? Well, you guys know what I'm saying here. It's a double I, standard that is ridiculous. Most of the time, I have no idea. A politician is a politician. Dave, it you're doesn't matter. Like crazy, what, you're popping like crazy, You're popping like crazy. Sorry. Do you not have a filter on your kisses? No, I can't find it. <laughs> the politicians, <laughs> yeah. they're they're all parasites, guys. They all they do not care about you. All right, let's take let's take the p words away from Dave for a little while. <laughs> Shane, what are your thoughts? Possibly, on Possibly, you need to precociously. <laughs> Proceed. I'm just going to edit Dave well, out of this entire show at this point. <laughs> I'm not surprised oh, that the right is, you know, being triggered over this, you know, the same way that the left would have been triggered over every single thing, you know, that they would have said about Obama. <laughs> but yeah. uh, so I do expect or even both if it would sides. Have been Nancy Pelosi or, or one of the lower end Democrats, the same thing. I mean, they, they, this, ex this is it literally Gabby Gifford, same thing. Same thing. Well, no. See, that's the thing. Some whack job shot at a, a senator. I, I, I was told. Or a, a, I, I was told by multiple people it's not the same thing because Gabby Gifford was also shot by a crazy leftist. It's like, yeah, no, it's it's the same thing. It's a politician was shot. <laughs> it doesn't matter because I, I don't really care about the motives necessarily Most of, of the shooter. Crazy leftists. Oh my dear God, Dave, you're Democrats. just not going to let anybody talk tonight, are you? Dave? Oh, my bad. <laughs> I'm fired up today, guys. <laughs> I try to give Shane the floor. You ran over him. I try to take it back. You're running over me again. I'm uh, damn. I'm fired up, Jeremy. Sorry, I, I don't see, get to it's talk okay. much. I've been working much. It's fine, Dave. I, I'm just busting your chops. Uh, well, no, I'm uh, just going to say. Go ahead, my, my bad. It's all right. No, I I tried that and I got told that it's not the same thing. It's like no, it is the same thing. It's it's because I, I don't care about the motives necessarily. Um, like I said, to me, it's the reaction, and it's like uh, what I was starting to say before is that you know the post I put out. It's like yeah, you know the so oh, people who consider themselves patriots back in the day, they recognized the problem and they went out and shot the bastards, and now the so-called patriots. Um, after what happened yesterday, are screaming, oh my God, they did shoot the bastards. We have to stop them. Stop them from shooting the government. It's like, <laughs> you people are so twisted, man. And then the who of it. I mean, I don't... I advocate the I don't advocate the open violence against people but it does pose that it does bring up you know this is what we were talking about before the show and I had mentioned earlier that maybe we should you know go down this road but it to me it does bring up that question you know when is it time to shoot these people you know <laughs> like, mm -hmm. well, and, I mean there's going to be a time I mean let's I mean let's be really honest here and I don't know this might be the fucking worst thing we've ever said on the show but there's going to be a time when There'll be the people left that have to be stopped. The Kim Jong Uns, the the Hitlers, the the Maos, the Stalins, they the, the the really crazy ones that do still have the ability to mass brainwash people. That you're going to have to stop in a very aggressive manner. Well, I mean, I, I'm not, I wasn't even taking it to that extreme. I, I was just, you know, because I always look at it as, you know, there's been plenty of Most talk state about state actors are going to go by the wayside the minute the the society won't permit a state to exist well i'm but, talking about these stragglers that are going to be left well, once a society's like yo we don't permit that okay. we'll just kill you but again i'm not i'm not taking it to that level i'm talking about even in the even in the here and now because you uh, know if because just from not even from a an actually let's do this perspective but you know, especially, I mean, you should understand this, Dave. I've, I've been seeing you running around trying to do this on, on social media for the past week or two, like a so much of other people too, trying to make these ethical arguments regardless of their actual practicality. Uh, <laughs> if you want to look at this from an ethical standpoint, well, if, all, if, if the position is that the state is built upon theft and murder and destruction and all these wonderful things um and we you know you me shane um not to use the royal we i'm not trying to mouse pocket or anything but uh to you know we are the perpetual victims of these crimes well how far does it go before you know it's okay to strike back and and like i said i'm, I'm talking about taking the 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 practicality or the or the pra or, or the if if it's if it's a pragmatic approach or not I'm I'm talking about not not taking it from that aspect just strictly from an ethical standpoint do you have a right to uh, well, retaliate I I think well, you're you're gonna know what I'm gonna say here like only it's it's gonna come down to individuals it's gonna come down to when an individual is like I this is my line because everyone's got a different line everyone does and I think like ninety percent of the people I know is the guns but at what point are you like, I've got my gun, but I, that's, what does that matter? I can't do anything. Well, I'm not the type to shoot first, but I'm definitely the type to shoot back. 
Well, sure. Well, I mean, in, in my opinion, a, a veiled threat of violence, uh, just because you capitulate it uh, to it immediately doesn't mean that they that wasn't essentially a first shot. There was no damage done, but property was expropriated from you. Well, well I your see consent. what you're saying. That, yeah. But this is where Jeremy was saying, you know, you have to pick and choose your battles and be a little bit more pragmatic, Correct. I guess. Well, no, yeah. and that's... I think this guy opening fire on all these senators was probably not a great pragmatic choice. No, it's especially well, <laughs> if no. he wants democratic ends to his means. Well, no, it and it rarely it it rarely is. Most lefties don't do that though. That's the problem. Is and and all these mass shooters, majority of them are whacked out commies, like plain and simple. They have they write manifestos half the time. Now I don't know if that's just a psyop. I don't know if that's just MK Ultra or whatever. What it, whatever road you want to go down. I don't know if uh, that's uh, CIA trying to force a meme. That that could be. There could be a lot at play here. But I mean, yeah, name see, a ma there are very few mass shooters that are devout right or outwardly right wing that are. Yeah, aren't. but see, I, I was thinking because I, I heard. I, I think I heard you say this earlier today, and I heard a couple other people mention this point. And I, of course, you know, a lot of people are, are pointing. Oh, it's always the leftists. It's always the leftists. It's always the leftists. And I'm okay. Again, to me, like ideology doesn't necessarily matter. Although I can, when I started thinking about this today, I'm like, yeah, I could see it, and 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 I could I could actually think right right away of a possible reason why is because there's people on both sides who are a little nutty and pretty mm -hmm. pissed off. However, who's more attached to the rule of law as a precious mm -hmm. thing that they, no matter how Ooh. angry they get, will violate? Ooh. Who's yeah. that? He got it. He it's, got it. It's the people on the right. So you just went straight there, didn't you? They, That's, you did, yeah. That's the root. So they may be, they may be quite just as capable of doing these things, but that's what trips them up because they are so all about that whole rule of law thing, uh, where the left doesn't care or as like, much about going, that we, because yeah. because uh, you know it's it's everything's relative to them and everything's fluid and like including <laughs> including uh, sexuality gender everything can be fluid at any one time um, nothing is ever um, permanent even for a minute so well, you know <laughs> and also I shot this person for the greater good is going through their head the the person that's like I'm afraid of the law is worried about the repercussions of their actions yes not not the I don't give a shit. I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to be a martyr for the cause. I'm going to be the the pusher of the the change for the greater good. Uh the other person's thinking more about their self, their family, them as an individual on that lawful side. Uh, I I think there's a huge confusion in the anarchist society that a lawful society isn't going to be desired by a lot of people. Oh, and, yeah. and I don't think a state has to administer a lawful any lawful decree. I think property owners could come together and say, hey, these are the rules we're all going to abide by to be in this covenant or in this contract. And then the law can get administered by an agreed upon arbiter. All of this can be done privately. It's once it's forced and in public uh, ownership is when it becomes the tragedy of the commons behind this and all these negative things happen. Well, uh, yeah. I, I agree. The tragedy of the commons, if you just look at it, 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 the state creates this almost all the time. And in it, 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 every industry they touch, the tragedy of the commons destroys it. Just look at farming. Look at everything that the state touch. It goes straight into tragedy of the commons because as a democracy, you don't have to worry about it after eight years or four years. All you have to worry about is shitting on it so bad the last you know, a little bit while you're in there to make it look really bad for the first next person that comes in after you. That's it. So your party has more to fight against to get back in power. They see the trends. They know these things. It's a tragedy of the commons on essentially the authority to do with your property what you want. That's what the state takes away from you. Well, yeah. Um, I was, I was <laughs> to your last point, I was starting to say, I agree with you largely, I, although it's not, you know, I, I think people, I, I mean, is, do I think it's possible to, to administer what you're describing without a state? Of course, I think it's possible, but I, I think you're, the point you started to make is actually, 
a little is maybe a, I don't know if more important is the right phrase, but uh, that people I don't think a lot of people take into in consideration. And this is something I've been running into a lot with a couple of different arguments. I, I think a lot of people in in our communities have forgotten um, to add reality into their equations. Um, because, mm-hmm. you know, in theory, a lot of this stuff sounds fucking spectacular and it could work, but there's a reason it's theorized about all the time and hasn't exactly been put into practice yet. It's the other fucking people that either don't believe in it or don't care about it or don't, or flat out don't want it. There's a lot more of them. They're the problem. It's the how so, do we get there that they've forgotten? Yeah. So and people do that when they get down these uh, philosophical rabbit holes for a while they're learning they're still gestating they're still figuring out everything about these philosophies and then they go okay i want to see this philosophy re, re reflected in reality how do we get there and i think it's great what's happening in the by and large anarchist community there are a lot more people having friend ending discussions and that's going to happen <laughs> It's great. Uh, There's friend-ending discussions happening everywhere. It's a wonderful time. That's going to happen. There are core principles that divide people that have to be exposed. We can't go singing Kumbaya falsely into the night thinking we all agree on something. You know, there's people that will agree on everything until you say the word property. And then they, it's like, dude, we can't even talk anymore because what they believe is property is not what you believe is property. And if you both are running off two different things, it doesn't matter what you believe. All the other stuff doesn't matter. The minute they think they can infringe on your, uh, take any scarce res- resource from you just because they emotionally feel like it's acceptable to do so, they're going to do it. And then you're going to have to have a violent or a physical conflict over scarce resources that could thus otherwise be averted. Yeah. I mean, it could... It- if, if it was discussed earlier on, sure, it could have been avoided. But <laughs> I think a lot of people were just in a rush to get... I know that sounds rough when you're talking about like a town where like only 100 families could have water and the rest couldn't. It's like, what do you do? do, do you, is the violence against the, the families that have the water and aren't sharing? It's like, it's all this lifeboat scenario that people don't... They want to avoid that to realize that the entire universe is just a big lifeboat and all resources are scarce. It's how do we use these scarce resources the most peaceful, productive way. And people have forgotten that that's what libertarianism is about. That's what freedom is about, is how do we not die using all of this stuff and fight and kill each other for it and play king of the mountain? Yeah, well, not everyone has to follow the non-aggression principle, but as long as you do, you know, then you're going to defend yourself when they violate what you, you know, your, your own principles like you're going to yeah. defend yourself and as long as they know that you know then they'll probably that's a it should be enough of a deterrent hopefully except for yeah it's, it, it you and it usually and I, I think we're still on the same page Jeremy about culture and I think that's the key and I still think that's the key and I haven't changed my mind on that at all yeah it has it has to be changed it, yeah it has to be changed but I think uh a lot of people like I said I I I think a lot of people get lost in you know wanting to get there and they're forgetting how to get there but yeah it's you were i mean you were mentioning the separations before this is something i've been hearing talked about a lot i I think that's it's a good thing um because yeah there's people have to i I think it's important for people to come to realizations about certain realities uh but it's also you know i i think it's also exposing a lot of not so well thought out ideas (laughs) It's also explain. It's also it's also um, uh, it's also shedding light on a lot of uh, open hostility that people had towards each other to begin with. Uh, that I think uh, gets swept under the rug a lot. And you know, it's because there's there's always a people out there. There's always that group of people out there going, oh, you know, all this, all this infighting. It's horrible. I wish people would stop doing it. It's like, well, no. First of all, and just on a on a on iron a, sharp and iron. Well, yeah, but just on a basic level, like uh, you know. Um, there's nothing wrong with infighting because that's how ideas get um, made better. You know, that's how you improve because, you know, you you try to 
you see, okay, well, this is how you guys want to do this. Well, you know, we over here think it could be done better. And like we align with most, you know, most of our principles or whatever it is, um, like 85, 90% of the way anyway. But here's these differences, like this, these, those constant struggles is how things improve. Um, now, of course, anything could be taken to an extreme and you can destroy, um, alliances just as easily by coming to these, you know, coming to these crossroads and not I've being able to deal with it. Do it. Yeah. But like I said, I, I think there's, there was a lot of people that, I don't know. They're just, like I said, there's, there's a lot of hostility out there. And, and I, when, when that comes from me, who's usually a very hostile person, <laughs> when I say that, it's like when I can recognize that it's like, all right, I just think everybody's lost sight i mean you you said that too like people have definitely lost sight of i think a lot of people have lost sight of the goal or at least what they at least what i at least what i understood a lot of people's goal to be because that was always my that was one of the things that i kind of took for granted i guess for a while was that all right i come across all these people whether they have slightly different ideologies or minor whether we don't agree all the way on these things or we have these you know stark differences there's still that overarching goal of the state going away, you know, right. which is why I've long since tried to be like more of like a panarchist where it's like, yeah, I don't care if you want to do things differently. Just do it over there. And if you're not bothering me and I'm not bothering you, who gives a rat's ass, man? You know, as long exactly. as as long as both of us I, want the state to end. So like I, I've been trying to get sure. towards like, how do we do that? Like I've been stuck on that. Not well, not stuck. I've been in that. How do we do I that? And now let's put that into action. I've been on that in that route in that mold for a while now, and I see a lot more people who are coming to that position now. It's like, well, how do we put this into action? And now, and but they're still talking about it in like theory and all this other stuff. It's like I think that's where a lot of this closed border argument comes from because I think some libertarians see the world, myself included, as. Think of how many borders there are right now. There are, uh, let's say, 190 to 200 nation states. Okay, I would like to see about 7 billion borders. Uh, this is what I'm going for. The 7 billion different independent kingdoms or whatnot. This is what I'm going for. Some of them see a world where essentially there are no state borders, thus then no borders. And anyone can move on Earth wherever the hell they want to. That's not going to happen if libertarianism is what happens. A society based on libertarian ethics happens. You won't be able to go over to this place that is has a cool waterfall on it without paying somebody. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to be able to go swim in that pool or go enjoy this baseball park or, or, or drive on that road without paying whoever owns it. Just nothing will be free. Free movement will, it will die the minute libertarianism a society supports libertarianism by and large well, free speech so free movement these things so when you're telling someone who's had these things their whole life uh, quasi free speech quasi free movement that these things are going to be eliminated they lose their fucking mind like they they're like i don't want anything to do with libertarianism i don't want to do anything with austrian economics anything like that and it takes a while to come to these realizations and a lot of people refuse to believe that this is the logical end of libertarianism but i am surely convinced that multiple multiple hundreds of thousands of independent societies with strict property norms would be what would be the result of a libertarian culture or society especially if it went worldwide okay good i'm glad you said that because it sounds like what you were getting at was privatization of all property right well that's that's the goal Right. Okay. But that does not necessarily mean no freedom of movement because individuals will cooperate, you know, to, of course. to find ways to, you know, move across, you know, property. Well, there's still going to be people in one location that are going to want something that is impossible to get on that location. So, right. yeah, you're, you're by and large, you're right. Yeah. There's still, I, 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 well, that's why I was saying it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's, it's free as in what I'm saying is it's supplied by the state. It's a forced thing right now. Free freedom of movement from Texas to Alabama or Texas to Oklahoma. That's free right now. 
because of quote unquote taxation. It's not free, but you know what I'm saying. Well, well that's what I was gonna say. It's it's not free now either because you can't and you can't you can't even exactly. you can't even make that argument because that that destroys your that, that destroys the uh, the other side of of that border argument about the whole taxation thing. Is well, no, because it's not free. You are paying for it now too. Um, <laughs> exactly, but it's in the tragedy that comes. I think though, I, that's the the free part about it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, freedom of this, freedom of that, freedom, you know, whatever. Like most of these things are, they're they're government, they're they're government things. They're not, they're not, they don't exist in nature. They're not, you know, you don't have you don't have those rights because, well, rights don't really exist. They're, you know, you you formulate them, and like you said, you know, if you have a community that agrees upon them, sure, but it's it's this whole getting there. It's, it's thing. essentially a religion. You have but, to have everyone in agreement. Hey, these are rights. These are what we're using them for. Yeah, and if. If everyone doesn't agree, everyone after this doesn't agree, we're going to kill that person or throw them out but, of the community. It's, but yeah, but the but, but we keep coming back to it's the, it's the, it's the getting there thing that's the issue, and you mm. know I think while 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 the the disagreements and the and the arguments and trying to flesh a lot of this stuff out is important and necessary, um, you know I think some of these divisions while they. They, it's looking like they definitely needed to happen because there seems to have been alliances that weren't very good to begin with um, because people weren't really very, they didn't understand each other very well. But it's also, I think people still don't understand each other very well because there's so much, there, there's so much this art, like, cause you know, I, I try to stay away from the whole border topic in general, but when you brought it up before, it's like, yeah, the, the whole thing, cause most people I know who get accused of such, don't believe in open borders, which is why the whole border debate for anarchists, I think, is asinine and a complete waste of time and an exercise in mental masturbation to the highest fucking degree. Because most people don't believe in open borders. Most people who are getting, myself included, who get accused of it are for the private property borders thing. It's right. just don't want mm -hmm. state borders, but because because Basically, there's an argument. Only commies are open border. Basically, well, no, no, and again, no. no, again, that that is another huge fallacy that you and your ilk, unfortunately, Dave, love to throw around. And Lou nailed this with a meme the other day, Lou Fien. Please, 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 please point to me to the communist country with open borders. <laughs> Please point to me any time in history, any single one of them. Well, I I point to you the to the hardest one. That was ever tried, which was the Soviet Union. Open borders, which no, no, expanded. which which one had open no. borders? They don't, the Dave. Communists don't have didn't... open borders. That again, that is something that gets trotted out as like is an ultimate thing. Well, Hold communists want open borders. Hold no, they don't, dude. They don't. There's Hold no. On. There's never Within been a the USSR, open border. You could freely move as long as you were a, a Soviet uh, citizen. I that's within, though. Uh, within, if you were a citizen. No. It, okay, if the USSR would have one, and there was just one world state, there would be free movement within it. No, Dave. Yeah, you no, know, Dave. There, Not there, free. There is no taxed or whatever. You, it, at 100%. Yes, yes, and you'd all be under there, so that doesn't count, Dave. There hasn't been one country. There hasn't been a communist country with open borders, because that's not a communist ideal. So to keep saying that only commies want open borders is a ridiculous they, statement okay, that, that they, so many people... No, I'm sorry, Dave. You and so many other people parrot this nonsense without thinking about it. That's why, oh, again, oh, that okay, I keep so saying... So this is why I keep saying with, with, such, with more and more certainty every day that a lot of people have detached themselves from reality completely and have done no, and do nothing but make make ethical and theoretical arguments and then pat themselves on the back for it but they haven't and, and this is something i've been i've been saying more and more recently and i'm going to say it very loudly right now if your fucking ethical argument has no practical application then it is fucking worthless and you were doing nothing but mentally masturbating for your own fucking gratification and to make to make yourself look better in front of other people it serves no well, fucking purpose. Well, so you want to talk about how to get to the there. Argument. You want you talk about when I had to get there. Okay. Let's talk about things how to get give me, there. Give me a second to address the whole. <laughs> All right. So what's the goal of Marxist communism? Those are two different things. Marxism and communism are, not, are, are actually two well, different Marxist, things. Marxism. Communist, mess, Marxism is the way to get to communism. What is the goal of communism? It's it, it shared um, abolish private property. To have yeah. a, basically, to have an entire abolished private property. Well, if you abolish private property, 
then how are there going to be any borders? How are there going to be, there how be isn't there going to be borders. free movement? There would be one state border, the entire planet, and you, everyone would be a citizen and everyone could move around it freely as a citizen. Again, that, that again, is what they're talking about as free movement. No, that, uh, is, that is the uh, communist free, open borders. That's what the open borders means. No borders. I, like it's all. No, again, again, uh, no, no, again. See, there you go again, falling right into it. Open borders and no borders are not the same thing. When there's no state borders except for one, there can't be a closed border. Do you get what I'm saying? There's no border. So it's so again, it's a semantical bullshit that people keep falling into and saying these things, but it's not actually true. Because no, again, the I theory have to react no, okay, Dave, to what they're Dave, saying. No, the no, you don't. Saying we want again, open again. Again, there, there you go. You go right again to the. There you go again. Yes. These so-called leftists want open borders for the United States as a nation together. That has nothing to do with the question that has been posed. What country, what communist country has had this? Because you go right back to what's Marxist, what's Marxist theory. What again are we talking about here, Dave? The difference between people keep theorizing, 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 and what actually happens in reality and practice. So the overarching theory of Marxism was this well, okay, global so worldwide, started, but in reality, there is it's never going, it's never been accomplished, and it's never going to be accomplished because there's always going to be people like us who are going to vehemently oppose that. So it's never actually going to occur. So the reality of the situation is there's never been a country, a communist country, with open borders because there can't be. So to say that the commun like to say that and then just lump anybody in who doesn't ag doesn't agree with the way you argue your position is well that means you're for open borders no because I'm not oh, I, I keep agree. getting accused I keep getting accused I of agree it. with that and I watch so many but I watched you do it too Dave I watch you accuse other friends of mine of the same thing and I'm like no no dude they're they're not you're just they don't agree with your art with your other arguments. So you just automatically lump them in, and that just becomes well. It's a communist thing for open borders. No, because communism doesn't actually work like that. Because what 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 the what the plebes who who think they want communism visualize and and clamor for, and what actually occurs in a communist yeah. state are not the same fucking thing. Because communism as Correct. a vision and state just communism like are two different things and that's this, another thing it, that gets lost at all of these the debates state is how communism is to be brought about now. yes you gotta but, read your camp your manifesto no no i understand <laughs> no no but again it doesn't actually get to that point because it's not correct it <laughs> on a statewide a level again it we're stuck in this status paradigm right now there's a back the, with every action there's a equal and opposite reaction right so for every lefty out there, there's supposedly theoretically a, a righty, right, pushing back. No, I don't believe. I don't the believe that at all. Because I, I, I still don't believe. You don't believe that. No, because I, because I don't believe this bullshit that everybody falls on the same one spectrum that people just want to. Because again, I have a real hard. To me, it goes I, I have a real hard time with this. everybody trying to make everything so fucking binary. Because you know what? It's not that well, simple. The world these is not binary. Just... It's not, dude. Well, of course, these are <laughs> these aren't these aren't. Um, absolutes man well no, well, this, no. This political well, no it is is a dave for every a way to define to, what people want the to say everybody things for, to say for how they what they believe to say there's this to say there has to be this equal and opposite pull you know push pull between left and right we, we, we would necessarily imply that everybody has to fall under that and i don't i don't agree with that would you agree that everyone exists inside the marketplace regardless of action or not they affect the marketplace I, I don't know, Dave. Does somebody like a, a guy who does somebody in a could, does somebody I don't know, does, farm ten thousand acres of rice and doesn't is affecting the the overall human marketplace, right? Like uh, that rice could be in production; it could be somewhere affecting. Yeah, he could, other but does a guy does a does, does a guy in a coma in somebody else's house who's willingly keeping him there? Um, and you know he's making an economic decision to take care of that person. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's not have to take take care of him. He's in a coma; just leave him alone. Just chills out there. <laughs> Well, yeah, he, him not being in the ground is affecting the morgue and the corn. You know, like, <laughs> oh, are, 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 really? Is, doesn't that, yeah, no, no, it goes are, that deep. Every, are you making the broken window economical. argument, Dave? No, no. Like, <laughs> 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 the, 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 
<laughs> because he didn't put him in the ground, he's affecting the morgue. You just you no, no, really no, just, you get you just went saying. there. You just made the you just made no, the broken just, window you get argument. What I'm saying. So okay, <laughs> no, no, there's see. always a there's always repercussions for either activity or inactivity as far as this you know limited scarce resources that we all uh, share uh, somewhat access to uh, plays out. Correct. So if everyone is in the marketplace, there are then people who want aggression in the marketplace and then people who want no aggression in the marketplace. Then you create your left and right right there. Your spectrum I mean, that's, is, is, is an economic one here. The left, I see right that more is, as authoritarian versus libertarian, like top versus bottom. See, that's your authority scale see the the economic yeah, exactly the, there's too many left to the, right authority is more, top to bottom there's right? more, there's more yeah. nuance okay. to everything see, and it just a, 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 yeah it's a it's a very semantical nuance thing and i well, no, it is I no it is more it is more nuanced board. i'm about to start glenn beck in this shit because my time is limited <laughs> and and if i can knock a five or ten minute video once a week out just doing something on the the uh the old chalkboard over here it's going to those videos always blow up whenever they're done right the whiteboard videos and I want to start explaining some of this shit in my head and let people either thoroughly shit on it or people go wow Dave's right or somewhat right because I don't think the current ideas that people have behind what they think the economic and political spectrum is I want to change it I think it's incorrect right now I don't think we're anywhere near explaining the full political economic and human spectrum really so you're saying inaction also affects the marketplace. So that Correct. like if economics is a study of human action, then it would also be the study of human inaction, I guess. Well, inaction is an action. I mean, if you watched a uh, if if you lit a fuse on a grenade or or a, a, a stick of dynamite and you held it in your hand and then across the street was a uh, I don't know, a building full of babies, you could either blow yourself up or throw it over there and blow them up. <laughs> Inaction is an action in that case, correct? Well, I mean, this is well, I guess it's a choice. You, you, yeah. you, you lit, yeah. you lit so, Dave, Dave, you lit the fuse. You already took an action. There wasn't an inaction. Well, the the, the circumstances are, are different after that fuse is lit. <laughs> no, you just, dude, you took an action to light the fuse. You put yourself in that position. Nature's That's taking really, course yeah, after that, yeah, man. Okay, yeah, maybe you should get that whiteboard. Write these things out a few times because I think you need to think about yeah, yeah, it before yeah. you present them. Look, it's hard to pull analogies <laughs> up off the top of your head, okay? It's That's why I, that's why I tried to stop. That's why I stopped doing it. it, it it's <laughs> not. <laughs> That like, easy. I can't do analogies. He's gonna steer clear of those. No, I can do them, but you got to think them out because some I, I think about them all the time because I, I go to say things sometimes and I'm like I stop myself. It's like okay, does that really? Okay, imagine does, if does a guy that, knows that, how that, to build follow? rockets for the German government in World War II and goes fuck you, I'm not doing it, and they torture him or whatever, and he still just doesn't do it. His inactivity affects the marketplace. It affects everything. You get what I'm saying? Even inactivity or not doing something. Or not even involving yourself with it is something. It's affecting the overall human because libertarianism and all this property norms, rights, all these are ways to figure out how to live peacefully among humans. You know, this, this is not this is an abstract. Yeah. And a lot of people lose sight of that. Well, morality doesn't exist. It's like, well, no idea that a human came up with fucking exist. Duh. Like it's it's just ideas in people's head. It exists inside of the electronic signals. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean we can't use these ideas, these abstracts, to better ourselves and to steer each other into a more peaceful coexistence. No, it doesn't mean that. But you do you do realize most of the time when when somebody tells somebody else that morality doesn't exist, it's usually just to trigger them because. See how many people get triggered. Oh yeah, I do that all the that. time. <laughs> I do it all the time, man. Kind of I like, LARP is quite a bit a lot of things, man. Most people, it's it's a hard time well, for they okay. they want to think Hold they're up. so secure let's, in their identity right, that they have since, to. Let's Shane have a say here. <laughs> since you brought up moral relativism, I have to go on a slight mini rant here, I guess. All right, so like, uh, all right, uh, you probably believe the morality is objective. Am I right? Yeah. <sighs> See, here's my, I mean, it would take me a minute to explain it, but basically, even if you weren't a human and you were sentient enough or intelligent enough to observe humanity, you could observe that no human can prefer theft from another human. If right. that and is the, reason, the case, that is a universal thing that no humans, regardless of any idea in any human's head, no human can prefer this action to happen from another human. 
regardless of what other actions they take. So if that's a universal thing, then we've created a standard, an ethical standard right. of human behavior, okay. which is and I would say don't further, steal. Yeah, that no no one can consent to a violation of consent. It's like a performative contradiction, right? All right. So I think that consent is the key here. Like you can objectively mm. measure consent. You either have consent or you don't. It's very binary in that way. And uh, I see consent as being the objective you know, measure of morality, I think, you know, it's, it's, to me, that's how morality is objective. Well, yeah, a consent-based morality. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Because once it's consensual, truly consensual, it's, it's thus moral because no one's property or whatnot within libertari libertarian norms or even, I think, uh, 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 what is this, uh, personal property, you know, and sock idea that I, I don't even think any of their ideals openly uh, support aggression. I just think their how to get there is a little uh, not right as far as establishing strict property norms. It's not going to happen their way. And that's what I want. Well, yeah. Alrighty then. Well, <laughs> and, and, and you're right about the consent thing. It's, and it plays into my left-right spectrum. Uh, the left are aggressing against people, and you don't consent to aggression ever. Like it just happens to you. Uh, the well, yeah, right and if you did, it wouldn't be aggression. Who, who want to everything to be consensual? If you, if you just look at even the way Jeremy was saying, the reason there aren't like all these right-wing, you know, mass shooters is because they fear the law. He's right. I hadn't thought about it that way, Jeremy, but they do. Think about the right winger mentality is like, hey, if we all just get the law perfect, everything should be fine. Yeah. They respect that that idea of the rule of law where people on the political left at least tend to be yeah. less they only care about it when it's affecting them directly. Although the people on the right do that. If a it lot helps too. them obtain their means. But overall their ends rather. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, again, the the people on the political right do do the same thing, but uh, of, uh, as an overarching thing, they there is that more of a consensus that they do have that respect for the rule of law type thing, I guess. Um, if Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, in all honesty, the election of Obama and the things he did should have led to like a, like a quote unquote a right wing civil war. But even then, they they just let the law kind of do what it did you know they just said well let's just follow the law and it's like <laughs> well okay i mean yeah and you saw the guy i mean well, there's they're going to be talking about what obama did to at least the laws of this country for years years and years to come and I, and i don't think america's at that the banana republic level where trump's just going to walk in and write i declare everything obama did null and void like that doesn't that doesn't work in america <laughs> That'd be awesome if he had an executive order to end all other executive orders. Rand Paul said that he was going to do that. Yeah, that was his claim. If, if he if he won, he was going day one. He was going to wipe every. <laughs> yeah, his, do you understand? His first executive uh, order was to to rescind all previous presidential uh, executive orders. I believe that was that was his claim, at least. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would shut down almost every exe That would shut down every executive agency. So think yes. about that. That's not in the Constitution. That would be, see, that's radical. Well, that's radical change. It, we can't, like, anarchists well, that's need to realize that we're not going to be able to jump over this pit we're at, this, this status pit. We're not going to be able to just jump over it and get to the, the other side as freedom. The state's going to have to be dis dis dismantled, taken away one by one, brick by brick. It has to be done. It's, it's a cultural change. Yeah, but it doesn't, well... I mean, that lends itself a little bit to incrementalism, which we've talked about extensively on the show. Political incrementalism does not work. It just it doesn't have a historical backing to say that you could you could point to and say, "Oh, look, see, this is where we did it." No, it, it doesn't. It always keeps increasing. Well, you're, you're However, trying to tweak the, uh, the 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 nuts and bolts in the engine room of the Titanic when you're trying to fix it like that. Yeah, when it's already well, sinking. Yeah. But what mm -hmm. what you can do is continue, hopefully, at some point on 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 mass. But you can start walking away from the state and more and more people just working outside of it to, you know, because, you know, these, these, 
you know what, what's that one line from from Reagan? You know that was probably written by Carl Hess at one point. Um, uh, but the only the, no, <laughs> nothing w- w- it was Reagan, right? Nothing more. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary government agency. Um, you yeah. know because yeah these things don't go Literally. away yeah they, these things don't go away and they're not going to like even you know even all the talk about from trump oh we're going to abolish this we're going to abolish this yeah and even with you know we were just talking before about what Rand paul promised if he had gotten in there once you actually get in that position you're told you're promptly told yeah that's a great goes great speeches you give yeah this is what you can do and this is what you can't do <laughs> And then and then they're, and then they're ushered back out there. Why do you think two hundred billion dollars worth of arms just went to Saudi Arabia? Exactly. <laughs> but that was something and that he went over there and danced and and and. Yeah, but that wasn't even all him, from what I ate recall. With these motherfuckers. That actually wasn't that. A lot of that was actually um, stuff that was already set up from Obama. I think most of those deals were signed by Obama yeah. in his last months or so. Yeah, I think and and and. But and, Trump could have day one canceled all of them. He well, that's that's the that's the the the, the bigger point, I believe. That yes, you know he he because because I saw a lot of cons- Saudi Arabia. We're not dealing with you until you do X Y Z. Yeah, that I, probably what happened. Yeah, well, because I I saw a lot of conservatives being like, oh, people are saying Trump. No, these were actually all Obama. Yeah, but Trump still could have said no. <laughs> and what was that globe shit? Anyways. <laughs> That that, <laughs> that had something to do with some. Um, I just heard about that today on the Scott Horton show, and now I forgot already what was it was. That some Wahhabi like ritual? No, it was. So, it, that was something from some some new security center that they were, um, or something like that. Oh, that they were uh, that they were all getting together for a photo op for. It, they, it, it, it had no, enough... the King of Saud. He, he is just a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I heard that's all. I heard. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, I, I said earlier I didn't want to get conspiratorial. So before we start getting any more consp- getting any conspiracy. What if that's what it was, Jeremy? We were all just, he was just like, yeah, I really like uh, The Lord of the Rings. And, uh, <laughs> that, that might actually be funny. But before we get down that road, we should probably get wrapping up. And uh, we should probably give Shane the floor a little, for a little bit before we go since we both ran over him most of this show. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, though, Shane. It was great having you here. Sorry, sorry, Shane. Oh, hey, no problem. It's great to be here and listen to Dave rant and uh, Jeremy counter rant. <laughs> Those you are guys, good rants. your back and forth is always very lively. I'll say that. Yeah, it's. What's well, funny is we've never been like, uh, we've never really had like a, a like a wow. That was an argument. It's always been like, I see your point. <laughs> yeah. Because well. normally one of us is pretty dead on on something. Either we're not looking at it the right way, or or. or just haven't heard that side of it. Right. I think that yeah. we don't agree on everything and if it would be a boring ass show if we did. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So All right. So uh, yeah, changing it from the inside doesn't work and uh like we've we've seen that before, but I mean people are going to attack at all angles and I don't discourage them from trying to do that, but you know, I think our our efforts should be focused outside of the state, you know, instead of signing executive orders to end executive orders or even passing laws that there ought to be no laws. That would be a nice one, by the way. Yeah, right. I think there um, be no more laws. Right. So instead of smashing the state or changing it from the inside, um, I think that we can just avoid the state and go around it by using the free market to, you know, undermine and circumvent government instead of going through it. Excellent. I agree. That's what, uh, you know, that's what, uh, but again, I, I'm, I wholeheartedly I'm, agree. I, I'm with you too. I'm not going to stop other people if they want to try a different method. That's fine. I, I, I have, I have what I think I, 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 I want to do and that's what I'm going to focus on. And I have enough people mm-hmm. in my little built in my little growing community that want to do the same thing. So we're going to try it our way and see what we can do. But it's yeah. individual action chain. That's all it is. It's look, no one, as a man or a woman, as an independent man or a woman, no one should tell you how to blaze your own path. You should say, I'm going to help my fellow humans get free by doing this because I love this. And boom, just pick a path and go with it. Yeah, pick what you're good at, example. pick what you love to do, and go with it. And tell everyone that you're uh, on your way there, hey, you should be free as well. Check out this. Or, hey, I'm, I think I'm free because of this. And just let them know. People want to be happy. They want to be free. They, they're tired of misery. They're tired of all this hate and anger. And yep. the minute you start doing it, instead of talking about it, it changes. Yep. Be the change. Lead by example. And when you change 
the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Well said. All right. Well, on that note, I think we will get wrapping up. Um, since this will be out Monday, uh, I'll give one last plea. Midwest Peace Liberty Fest is going to be happening, well, by the time this comes out, in a couple of days. So uh, you still have time to get there. And uh, Shane, and, Shane and I will oh, both Shane, Shane, must go. Shane and I will both be there. Um, I'll put I'll throw a link in the show notes for it. And uh, yeah, if you if you're anywhere near the area or can get near the area, then uh, come check it out because uh, it promises to be a lot of fun. You can get your picture taken with the infamous. Uh, uh, camera or the infamous knife man that almost killed that camera lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The interview lady from that nice news establishment. You can get your picture taken with that crazy psycho. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the embattled Levittown man. Yes, that's me. Embattled. <laughs> the embattled Levittown man. That's <laughs> em em embattled Levittown business owner. That's I think that's what the couple of headlines <sighs> said. But yeah. any hoodle. All right, so yeah, so so go so go check out the fest if you can. Uh, if not, you better make it there next year. Um, our website is still not quite ready yet. Uh, <laughs> we'll even make the mugshot face for you. So we can uh, all of our stuff can be found on, in the usual places on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, Libsyn still has our podcast for the time being, and we'll get that all sorted out eventually. Dave, uh, we'll finally get a website up. I don't know, but. Uh, we have it basically there. I just need money. <laughs> so if you want to donate to our Patreon to help pay for a we uh, website, web hosting, do it. Hashtag please donate. Um, but yes, our Patreon's still up. And I and there there should be a new... I'm going to try to get an episode out on the Patreon before uh, before I take off next week. And uh, Oh, and the, yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, there will most likely not be a show next week uh, unless Dave can pull something off uh, because both Andre and I will be out of town. And... Uh, otherwise occupied so most likely we'll get back to you in a couple of weeks so this has been the seeds of liberty podcast and we'll catch you next time peace Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at Get Cell. 411.com that's get cell 411.com are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home wars on our freedoms antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news views interviews and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com.